And present with us today is um, uh, me, um, Dr. Sri Banerjee, committee member, Dr. Uh, Patrick Dunn, and then student um, Shalika Tissinger. Um, and she'll be presenting on fibromyalgia. Um, so Shalika, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and get started. All right. Um, good morning again, Dr. Dunn and Dr. B. I am so excited to be here. I'm thrilled to be here. And um, excited to present my analysis on the association between mental health and fibromyalgia in African Americans. All right. The purpose of this study was to explore statistical influences between the dependent variable, which is fibromyalgia, and the independent variables, depression, cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, education le levels such as some high school, high school graduates, some college or higher, diet, poverty, income ratio, PIR, diabetes, gender, and age. There is a depression and chronic pain affect the quality of life and can be multidirectional and coexist. Core morbid symptoms are often in common in individuals with heart failure. Moreover, no other researchers have investigated the social determinants of health related to fibromyalgia and depression with medication in African Americans alone. Um, this topic has not been explored um, with a nationally represented data set, especially among African Americans living in socio low socioeconomic population as it, to as it relates to pain and the social determinants of health. The methods and study design, um, I used the secondary data was pulled from the NHIS, the National Health Institute, National Health Survey interview, um, 2011 through 2018. This is a quantitative cross-sectional research design and a binary logistic regression analysis. Fibromyalgia is a long-lasting rheumatoid chronic condition that causes widespread of pain and tenderness throughout the body. Depression is a mood disorder with symptoms ranging from minor to severe. Um, it is also known as major depression, major depressive disorder, and clinical depression. It is a long lasting feeling of constant pain, sadness, loss of interest, and often stops an individual from doing their normal day-to-day -day activities, such as sleeping, eating, working, spending time with family and friends. According to Dritch et al., they reported that the depressive symptoms in African Americans are more severe than any other racial ethnic groups. And approximately 45% of African Americans diagnosed with major depressive disorder actually um, seek treatment. Fibromyalgia and depression can vary in symptoms. However, they can, they can share multiple symptoms, causing the symptoms to become bidirectional. All have been linked to causing chronic widespread pain throughout the body at multiple sites. Pain is often left in the arms and felt in the arms, the legs, the head, the chest, the abdomen, the buttocks. Individuals um, often describe the pain as an aching, burning, throbbing um, sensation along with fatigue and an overwhelming feeling of being tired and trouble sleeping um, are amongst a few other symptoms. Muscle stiffness, muscle and joint stiffness, tenderness to the touch, numbness or tingling in the arms and legs, problems with concentrating, thinking clearly, and memories, which is sometimes called brain fog, um, heightened sensitivity to light, noise, odors, and temperature, and lastly, temperatures, and lastly, digestive issues such as bloating and or constipation. All right, the SEM model, the socio-ecological model, um, addresses that I use addresses the social determinants of health and the variables associated. Um, the conditions of the environment in which the individuals are born, live, work, and have which have been linked to impacting lives. Among many factors, socioeconomic status, education, physical environment, employment, um, and social support networks are a few of the also main factors, contributing factors. Social determinants of health can be grouped into five categories, economic stability, education, access to health care, quality neighborhoods, and social community. 
All right. The participants and sample size on um, secondary data was extracted from NHIS um, 2011 through 2018 data set. The population are African American men and women who reside within the United States. The inclusion criteria are um, you must be African American, 21 years of age, and a history of fibromyalgia and depression. Live within the United States during the time of the survey. Um, their age was revealed, the sex, the marital status, um, the race, and education level. The criteria, um, the exclusion criteria for participants for anyone under 21 years of age, non African American, um, and living outside of the United States, and those who did not identify with either male or female. The variables, <clears throat> excuse me, are the dependent variables, is fibromyalgia, and the independent variables are depression cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, the education level, um, diet, PIR, diabetes, gender, and age. There is no prior research to determine if there is a relationship between depression and fibromyalgia economic stability, considering the social determinants of health among African Americans. Although the etiology of fibromyalgia is unclear, it approximately is 4.9 um, Americans a million, I'm sorry, in the general population. It affects 4.9 um, million in the general population. Um, Hart et al. estimated that the prevalence of chronic back pain is 10.1%. 7.1% is related to leg and feet pain, 4.1% is related to arms and hand pain, and lastly, um, 3.5% is related to headache pain or headaches. Bailey et al. also reported that less than 10% of African Americans seek, a medical seek medical attention for their mental health concerns. Research question and hypothesis one. The first research question, is there an association between depression and fibromyalgia among African-Americans at the controlling for cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, education level, diet, PIR, diabetes, gender, and age? The no hypothesis is there is no association between depression with medication and fibromyalgia amongst African-Americans at the controlling for cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, education level, diet, PIR, diabetes, age, gender, and age. The alternative hypothesis is there is an association between depression and fibromyalgia amongst African Americans after controlling for the independent variables. All right. The research question two and hypothesis, um, research question and hypothesis two, is there association between anxiety with medication and fibromyalgia among African Americans after controlling for the independent variables? Um, the no hypothesis is there is no association um, between anxiety with medication and fibromyalgia amongst African Americans after controlling for cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, diet, I'm sorry, disease, arthritis, education level, PIR, diabetes, gender, and age. And the alternative hypothesis is there is an association between anxiety and medication, anxiety with medication and fibromyalgia among African-Americans after controlling for the independent variables. And research question three <clears throat> and hypothesis. Is there association between fibromyalgia and poor access to healthcare among African-Americans after controlling for the independent variables? Um, the no hypothesis, there is no association between fibromyalgia and um, poor access to health care among African Americans after controlling for cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, education level, um, diet, PIR, diabetes, gender, and age. And the lastly, that there the alternative that there is an association between fibromyalgia and poor access to health care among African Americans at the controlling for cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, education level, um, diet, PRR, gender, and age.
All right, research question one results. And the research question one results is 18.1% were taking medication for depression and 81.9% were not taking medication for depression. Um, the research question continued. Is research question one measured the association of depression with medication concurrently with fibromyalgia, along with the independent variables measured in African Americans? Individuals with depression were 1.82 times more likely to develop fibromyalgia than those without depression. The p value of 0.26, making the relationship not statistically significant. 95% um, confidence interval is between 0.64 and 5.18. The findings show that there is no association between fibromyalgia and depression with medication, and I accepted the no. All right, research question two results. 15.5% were taking medication for anxiety, and 84.5% were not on medication for anxiety. Research question two measured the association between anxiety um, with medication and fibromyalgia amongst African Americans. Individuals with anxiety were 0.77 times more likely to develop fibromyalgia than those without anxiety medication. The p value is 0.38, making the relationship not st statistically significant. Um, the 95 percent confident interval is between 0.54 and 1.65. The findings show that there is no association between anxiety medication and fibromyalgia, and I accepted the no. Research question two results is 3.8% had access to health care and the largest population of 96.2% did not. Okay. Okay. Um, research question um, three results is, is there association between fibromyalgia, and poor access to health care amongst African Americans. Individuals without access to health care was 1.34 times more likely to develop fibromyalgia than those living without the access to health care. Living with, I'm sorry, access to health care. The p-value is 0.63, making the relationship not statistically significant. The 95% confident interval is 0.42 and 4.28. The results show the results show the individual individuals who living with with arthritis compared to those that did not have arthritis was 4.20 times more likely to develop fibromyalgia. The p value was less than 0 0.001, which makes the relationship statistically significant. The 95% confidence interval is between 1.84 and 9.59. It has not been explored with a nationally represented data set, especially amongst African-Americans in low econ socioeconomic populations as it relates to pain and economic disparities. Janovic et al. reported African-Americans um, along with individuals in low income areas reported more pain related disability um, across their day-to-day -day activity. Diabetes and African-Americans reported that there is, there is a high mortality rate for diet-related diseases amongst African Americans who does not consume a healthy diet, um, which is low in calories, fat, and salt. According to a previous study at Heart et al., the prevalence of the chronic pain estimated to be 10.1%, which was related to back pain, and 7.1% related to pain in the legs and feet, 4.1% related to pains in the arms and hands, and 3.5% related to the pain, um, headache pain. Overall, 11% and 3.6% of individuals um, associated chronic um, pain with both widespread and regionally, respectfully.
All right, the social ecological model, the SEM model, addresses the social determinants of health and the variables associated. The conditions of the environment in which an individual um, grow, are born, grow, live, work, and have been linked to impacting their lives and health. Past literature suggests that there is a strong predictive of health inequalities that is linked to unfair and avoidable differences in health status between communities. Among many factors, social determinants excuse me, status, education, physical environment, employment, and social support networks, and access to healthcare are the main impacting factors. There are five social determinants of health. Quality of education, access to education, increases educational opportunities and individuals to do well in school. Healthcare access increases exposure to comprehensive, high quality healthcare service. Economic stability helps individuals earn a steady income to meet their health and financial needs. Um, social and community context in increases social and community support. And finally, um, neighborhoods are built, um, neighborhoods and well built environments create a neighborhood and environment that are safe and promote healthy lifestyles. All right, there were some limitations with this study. There was limited data on African Americans due to um, lack of access to healthcare. There is a paucity of research regarding societal factors controlling for the social determinants of health in African Americans. Um, low en enrollment numbers in clinical trials um, was also an issue due to trust, experimentation, uh, mistrust. Um, experimentation, communication, and logistics are some of the most common um, barriers that were identified. Implementing secondary data can also be out, um, outdated and the current research, current research can take a little longer to locate. Amongst more of the limitations where the secondary data typically sometimes have a disadvantage of lack of control over this validity because the researcher did not collect the data themselves. All right, further recommendations. Further recommendations were made for future research um, after studying the relationship between depression, anxiety, and medical access among, as, amongst African Americans. Also to consider a different research design um, that are different biases and different biases that can affect the findings and needed interventions to address the issues. It will be helpful to capture qualitatively, qualitatively qualitatively um, evidence and perspective of individuals with different backgrounds. Um, also a new construct of variables such as pain, grip, strength, morning stiffness, um, alcohol consumption, coffee consumption, and its infections. All right, social change contribution. Um, amongst the social change contribution, the support, it will aid in supporting public health initials, initiatives on policy change. Future studies can also um, compare the interventions and preventative measures amongst African Americans diagnosed with the chronic condition. Um, it is imperative to increase awareness and promote healthy lifestyles and aid in controlling the preventative measures. The data from this study can be used by government officials, organizations seeking statistical data um, gathered from African Americans only. Um, risk, it can contribute by um, risk reduction creating awareness for the risk reduction program of anxiety triggers, um, coping strategies, and access to free resources. And lastly, the social change um, contribution can increase access to mental health, education, and counseling in underserved communities, populations, and communities. In conclusion, Conant all statistics show that minorities who are at a disadvantage and poor populations have a high prevalence of diseases, disability, and reduced um, self-efficiency. Conant all statistics also prove that rheumatoid arthritis and minorities found that African Americans and Hispanics reported worse pain scores than any other group. It has been proven that race and social economic status influences outcome regarding fibromyalgia, heart disease, and depression. There are range differences in the burdens of fibromyalgia and the risk factors on the state, local, and national level. So 
specific diseases uh, and risk factors such as access to health care, anxiety, depression, um, high BMI, poor diet, diabetes um, are increasing and warrant, warrant more attention. The data from this research study can be used to inform national health policies for research, clinical care, and policies. Oh, wait, lastly. I would like to thank you, Dr. B, for my gratitude and my appreciation for always being there, picking up the phone, even when I was nervous, um, text you um, different times. You was always there to provide the guidance. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Dunn, for your constructive criticism throughout this process and the feedback on my manuscripts. Um, thank you again with you all assistance. I am excited and um, I have grown a lot. And this would has really helped me on my journey to becoming a better researcher. Jalika, thank you. Um, and um, that was great. Um, and and um, likewise, I've, I've seen you um, develop into a great researcher. And um, this was a great presentation. Um, um, before I take over, um, Dr. Dunn, um, questions and comments. Sure. So I'll second that, Shalika. Excellent presentation. Nicely done. No need to be nervous. You did great. Thank you. Um, you answered a lot of my questions, so I'm going to stay uh, a little bit general, but I'd li like to know, like, just the whole process, not just the your findings. What did you learn from this process? Oh, man. the What I learned is to keep an open mind. When I first came into this process, I was tunnel vision on just fibromyalgia. And I did look at the independent variables, but I didn't realize how much they weigh in on the outcome, the variables that weigh in on the outcomes. So just keeping an open mind, searching for data. I originally started out just looking at fibromyalgia and it, it, it brought it out to pain. And then it had brought it out to um, widen my research with the food insecurities. Why? And then it was food and then it was religion. It was so many different fairies. Mm -hmm. It's like once you open the book, you start to unravel and it explores. So just going in with an open mind, I didn't realize how open minded and how much I will learn through this process. What were some things you were surprised by? And this could could be in your in your results or your findings. That's it. That's what I was surprised about. I was surprised mm -hmm. by my results and my findings that um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it didn't come out the way that I expected it to come out, which caused me to think further. And I thought about how it could be because of the low enrollment numbers, or it could be because of the previous um, study shows and statistics shows that sometimes um, the answer we're giving that they felt was the right answers instead of what was true answers as well. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. what was most shocking as well. So what's next for you? Do you plan to continue this type of research or yeah. other forms of research? What's what's in yeah. store for Shalika? What's in store for Shalika is to become an epidemiologist. Um, I do plan to present this study. I plan to expand this research to consider the qualitative uh, methods as well. Now that I have the quantitative, I want to open it up and broaden it to qualitative and also mm -hmm. consider the other um, races as well. So does that mean you would do it as a mixed methods or would you simply do a, a qualitative study that complemented the study? I think I will first do qualitative to gather the, the data and then open it up to possibly mixed methods. Okay. And say more about your plans for dissemination. Do you have journals in mind, conferences in mind? What are, what are your yeah. plans there? I have journals in mind. I have joined the National um, Public Health Institute, um, other organizations to present. Um, and just to further and grow research is my heart. I love research. It's something that mm -hmm. I would do um, different organizations. So I do plan to broaden through um, presenting and writing more journals and research studies. Mm -hmm. And where does this take you? Is this, would you stay with in your current role? Would you be looking for different, is this a career move moment for you? Oh, What's, yes. yes. Yes, it is definitely a career moment. I have been shift. Um, I'm currently the executive director at a drug and alcohol residential facility, which is still in the realm of public health. Um, mm -hmm. It's only another side is more of the field work. I would like to do more research of the initiatives as far as diseases and comorbid diseases and epidemiology. So it would definitely mm -hmm. be a career move and which I am seeking right now. 
Nice. Well, let us know if there's any way we can be of assistance to you, whether it's on the research or or your your career journey, or Thank and you. and especially on any dissemination. If you're trying, if you need some assistance, uh, can be daunting, can be frustrating sometimes because sometimes you have to have thick skin and oh, yes. sometimes you get rejected. But that doesn't mean that it it's a bad thing. It's just how just how the game's played. It's a process. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Okay. Well, those are all my questions. Congratulations and be sure to celebrate. Oh, yes. I will. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Oh, yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. No, I, again, I um, echo Dr. Dunn's um, comments, um, uh, dissemination, and, and a lot of things that you can be doing, and we're, we're here to assist. Um, uh, you might be um, gone as a as a student. Um, you're you're still um, you know our student, my student. So thank you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Um, just so the, for the sake of complete completion, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so um, in terms of uh, binary logistic regression versus linear regression, um, what was the reason that you selected one of them? Yeah, I selected the logistic regression because of the dependent variable. My dependent variable is dichotomous, and it has two categories. Correct. Yeah. So when you have logistic regression, your outcome variable, um, like you said, has to have two categories. Um, and then when you have multivariate, then you have multiple variables that are predicting the outcome variable. And so you're confounding and looking for confounding. Can can you give kind of a brief understanding about confounding? Yes, confounding, and when I that was something that I another big thing that I learned about the confounders. The confounders was the purpose to gain understanding on what type of relationship that the independent variables have on the dependent variables to increase at in accuracy. So that's mm -hmm. what I learned the most on to consider the confounders and how they're weighed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, correct. Um, and and so sometimes, you know, people can um, attribute the relationship to just the independent variable and dependent variable. Um, however, the differences might be because of age, um, because of gender. So you might have a group that is higher in age, and that's the relationship that is actually there and not the relationship between the main dependent variable and independent variable. Um, yeah. So great answer. Um, and um, th these are concepts that you want to take with you, um, and I want to make sure that um, you have this um, understanding. Um, yes. And and these are something that um, a lot of people have to understand, you know. So um, they might ask you when you have and um, when you present your research. Um, great presentation. Um, this is the type of presentation that you want to submit. Um, I know we had kind of a, a improvement, and um, uh, yes. you you had an improvement here. Um, uh, Thank you. Great presentation. Um, those are all the questions I had. Um, Dr. Dunn covered the dissemination portion and um, everything else. So um, at this point, I, I believe Dr. Dunn kind of um, alluded to this. Um, uh, Dr. Dunn, what, 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 what say you about the presentation? Yeah, I would pass um, without revisions. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yep. Without revisions. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you, Doctor Doctor Kissinger. That's right. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. Oh how my does, God! Thank you. How does that sound? <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So celebrate, like um, Dr. Don said. Um, uh, don't look at anything. Um, <laughs> I'm, oh, this is I'm not. This is <laughs> honestly, I am not looking at anything. This is it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And then tomorrow uh, morning, but I'll go ahead and approve this. And then tomorrow morning, just do your um, submission, and then we'll yeah. we'll take care of the rest. Thank you so much, Dr. B. Thank you You're so welcome. much, Dr. Dunn. I am mm -hmm. so excited. Thank you all so much. Nice. All right. Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right. Dr. Dunn, thank you. Yep. I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.